This video contains the solutions to the calculus and polar coordinates practice problems. For this first problem, we're asked to find the slope of a tangent line to a polar curve r equals 1 minus cosine theta at theta equals pi over 6. So for this one, we need to know the formula for the slope of the tangent line to a polar curve, which is that dy dx equals f prime of theta times cosine of, sorry, times sine of theta plus f of theta times cosine of theta all divided by f prime of theta times cosine theta minus f of theta times sine theta. Now what I like to do for these types of problems is let's figure out what all of those values are. Let's figure out f of theta, f prime of theta, sine of theta, cosine theta, and then we just have to plug in. So first things first, we'll figure out sine of theta and cosine of theta. So sine of 5 over 6 is 1 half, cosine of 5 over 6 is square root of 3 over 2. Now let's find a formula for our derivative, f prime of theta. Well, the derivative of 1 minus cosine theta is positive sine of theta. So that means that f of theta, f of pi over 6, is 1 minus cosine of pi over 6, which is 1 minus the square root of 3 over 2. And then f prime of theta, that's just the same as the sine of theta, which is 1 half. So now we need to substitute these values in. Now we need to substitute these values in. So f prime of theta is 1 half, sine of theta is 1 half, plus f of theta is 1 minus the square root of 3 over 2, cosine of theta is the square root of 3 over 2, then f prime of theta is 1 half again, cosine of theta is the square root of 3 over 2, minus f of theta, which is 1 minus the square root of 3 over 2, times the sine of theta, which is 1 half. Now let's multiply this out and see if we can simplify. 1 half times 1 half is 1 fourth, plus 1 times the square root of 3 over 2 is the square root of 3 over 2, minus square root of 3 over 2 times the square root of 3 over 2 is 3 fourths. Now on the bottom, we have the square root of 3 over 4, minus 1 times a half is 1 half, minus times a minus is a plus, square root of 3 over 2 times 1 half is square root of 3 over 4. Now on the top, 1 fourth minus 3 fourths is negative 1 half, so we have negative 1 half plus the square root of 3 over 2. And then on the bottom, we have negative 1 half, and square root of 3 over 4 plus square root of 3 over 4 is also square root of 3 over 2. So the top and the bottom of this fraction are the same. That means the entire fraction just equals 1. So the slope of our tangent line is 1. Very similar problem. We're going to do it in pretty much the same way. Again, we want to find the slope of a tangent line to a polar curve at a given point. So again, the formula we're going to use is dy dx equals f prime of theta times the sine of theta plus f of theta cosine of theta all divided by f prime of theta cosine of theta minus f of theta sine of theta. And again, let's just go off on the side and figure out what all these values are. Sine of 5 pi over 6 is, is 1 half. Cosine of 5 pi over 6 is minus the square root of 3 over 2. Let's do a little trigonometry there. Now our function, so f of 5 pi over 6, that's 4 times the cosine of 5 pi over 6. So that's going to be negative 2 times the square root of 3. And then my formula for f prime of theta, well, if my formula is 4 cosine theta, then my derivative is going to be negative 4 sine of theta. And that means that f prime of 5 pi over 6 is going to be negative 4 times a half, which is just negative 2. So let's plug all this stuff in. f prime of theta, we just figured out was negative 2. Sine of theta is 1 half. f of theta is negative 2 times the square root of 3. Cosine of theta is minus the square root of 3 over 2. On the bottom, f prime is negative 2. Cosine of theta is minus 3 times over the square root of, sorry, minus the square root of 3 over 2, and then minus f of theta, which is minus 2 radical 3, times sine of theta, which is 1 half. So we can do some simplification here. Minus 2 cancel out with 2. 2's cancel, 2's cancel, 2's cancel. And so what we end up with is, on the top, we have negative 1. And then minus the square root of 3 times minus the square root of 3 is just plus 3. And then on the bottom, 
we have minus times a minus is a positive square root of 3, minus times a minus is a positive square root of 3. So we just have 2 divided by 2 times the square root of 3. We can divide out those 2s, and we end up with just 1 over the square root of 3. And again, that's the slope of our tangent line. All right, now we're using integrals to find areas of polar regions. The general formula we want to use here is that the area is the integral from alpha to beta of 1 half times f of theta squared d theta. But setting up the integral is often the tricky part here. So we want to think radially. We can see in our picture here, and, and having a picture really helps, we want to start from the positive x-axis, and we want to rotate counterclockwise, thinking about radial lines, and we want to keep rotating around until we reach the end of our region. And in this case, that happens right here at pi over 2. And since we started at theta equals 0 and ended at theta equals pi over 2, those are the bounds on my integral. So my integral is going to be from 0 to pi over 2. And then I just plug in what my function is. My function is the square root of cosine theta. So conveniently, when I square that, I can take the 1 half out of the integral. Squaring the square root of cosine just gives me cosine. Antiderivative of cosine is sine. So this is going to be 1 half times the sine of pi over 2 minus the sine of 0. Sine of pi over 2 is 1. Sine of 0 is 0. So we get the area is just 1 half. Now for this last problem, we're trying to find the area of this region between two polar curves. Now we can make our lives a little bit easier just by using symmetry, because if you notice, this region right here that I'm outlining is actually one-eighth of the total. So if I think of that as region 1, here's region 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I've got eight regions that are all have identical area. And again, if I set up an integral just to evaluate this region, the area of that region, then I can just multiply my answer by 8, and that'll give me my result. So how do I set up that integral? Well, I'm going to think radially again. If I start here at theta equals 0 and rotate around counterclockwise until I get to the end of the region, I get to this radial line right here. So, And that's where the circle and the four-leaf clover here cross each other. So where do they cross? Where does 4 cosine 2 theta equal 2 in that first quadrant? Well, if I divide both sides by 2, I get that the cosine of theta, 2 theta equals 1 half. Now I know that the cosine of pi over 3, 60 degrees, equals 1 half. So one solution, certainly, to this equation is that theta equals pi over 6. And that fits with my picture. It looks like right around 30 degrees, pi over 6, is where those two curves cross. So that's going to be my integral. My area is going to be 8 times the integral from 0 to pi over 6, Again, I'm multiplying by 8 just using symmetry. And then my formula is going to be 1 half times the difference of the squares of the two functions. So this is going to be 4 cosine 2 theta. The 4 leaf clover is the outer curve, and the circle is the inner curve. So that's how I know which order to subtract those. So 4 cosine 2 theta squared minus 2 squared. So now we have to work out that integral, and that's going to be no mean feat. We can take the 1 half out of the integral. 1 half times 8 is 4. Then let's work out those squares. So we're still integrating from 0 to pi over 6. Squaring 4 gets us 16. And then we get cosine squared of 2 theta. And then 2 squared is 4. Now integrating the 4 is going to be no problem. But the 16 cosine squared of 2 theta, that's going to be a bit of, a, uh, of some work. So what we need to remember is our half angle formula. which says that the cosine squared of x is 1 half times 1 plus cosine of 2x. In this case, my x is 2 theta, so I have 16 times 1 half times 1 plus cosine of 2 times 2 theta, which is 4 theta, and then still minus 4. So we can integrate this. Just simplify it a little bit. So we get 8 plus 8 cosine 4 theta minus 4. Eight minus four is four, so that's four minus eight cosine four theta. 
Simple substitution gets us antiderivative of 4 is 4 theta, and then I do the substitution for the cosine of 4 theta, that's going to give me 2 sine 4 theta. And then again, I just need to plug in pi over 6 and 0 and subtract. That part's pretty easy, it's just plug and chug. When I plug all that stuff in, what I should end up with is 8 pi over 3 plus 4 times the square root of 3. And that is the area of our region.